Hello. Today I want to show you how to read an Intel 8051 chip like this one. Um, can I focus it a little bit? Yeah, maybe not. But anyway, this is a 40 pin dip. It's an Intel uh, P8051AH. So it's an early model Intel 8051 chip and it came from a TRS-80 DT1 data terminal. And uh, today I'm going to use the uh, uh, MCU Mall GQ 4x4 EEPROM programmer reader along with an adapter. They have an adapter called the ADP015. And uh, I uh, got this adapter because it reads 8051 variants, supposedly. Um, so the way this works, first of all, is you insert it into the programmer in the bottom part of the socket. Um, and lock it down so it looks like that and then uh, the problem you'll see is that when you run the software the reason why this isn't trivial um, is uh, let me get this in focus here okay uh, you can select your device is the first thing you're supposed to do and when you go to the device list you'll find that there is no Intel 8051. There are a lot of things that are close. There are companies that have made uh, similar, more advanced versions that are supposedly backward compatible. But the one that I found to work is made by Atmel, and it's a uh, AT89S53. At least the algorithm works for the 53. So if you, but if you look at this device, and you select this device, first thing you'll see is it says, yes, you need to use the ADP015 adapter. That's great. Um, the thing is, it's a 12K part, and the original 8051 was only 4K. So you can read it with this, and it will work, but you'll have to cut the image down to only the first 4K. So what I want to show you now is how to add support for the actual 8051 to the program itself. And the way you do that is you go under... Uh, you under device user folder and what you'll find is you have something in here called devices.txt you double click to open that and there's a big list of all the devices that are supported so uh, what you can do then is you're going to look for the line that gives you support for the 89s53 and there's the line it's a one liner it's right here you can cut and paste this line Okay, apologize if you can't quite see that, but it's, uh, yeah, can we get that a little bit better? So we, we cut and paste this line to create a new one, and then under name here, instead of AT89S53, we're going to call it Intel 8051. Of course, it's read-only because it's a mask ROM. And then under ID, we're just going to give it four capital X's because that appears to be what they do when there isn't a pre-made one, but it still says class is AT89S53, which means it's going to use the right algorithm. And we go to the end and it says code size. And instead of code size equals 12288, we just say code size equals 4096, which is 4K. And we can even change the comment at the end saying it's a 4K part. So now we'll save that devices.txt. Oh gosh, I'm way off in the weeds. But anyway, we've saved it. And now we have to restart the programmer program so that it will reread the new devices.txt file. And now what you'll find is under device, device list, we can just type 8051, Intel 8051, select, hey, there it is. It seems to like it now. Uh, all right, let's see if we can read this thing. So we'll put the chip in carefully, make sure the notch is facing up. Uh, there's also one jumper on this board and it's set to the 89 side, which is how it came. Um, we lock it in there and read. Read and uh, command verify. It verifies good. Let's take a quick peek in the buffer. And sure enough, we can see, hey, there's 4K of stuff in there, including some 
some ASCII, a copyright notice from Tandy, um, and uh, there you have it. So now you can save off the buffer, and that's how you read an Intel 8051 using this particular setup.